Pax, Chapter 9. Approaching the meadow from the forest above, Gray stopped suddenly, nose in the air. Again. He lifted his muzzle to test the scent more carefully. Stronger. Pax, already hesitant, tensed. Gray hurried to the edge of the trees. A loner is challenging me. He wants this territory, but his display is for the young vixen's benefit. She will choose a mate this winter. Pax followed and took in the scene below him. Four foxes dotted the meadow. Bristle and Runt stood together, their black-tipped ears pricked forward warily toward the other two, who faced each other on a ledge of rock halfway down. One of these was a vixen, darker than Bristle, and big-bellied with kits. The other was a large male with a rough, tawny fur. His hackles were up and his left ear was split. Gray barked to announce his presence. The challenger spun off the ledge, an arc of blood sprang from his ear and bolted down the meadow. Gray picked his way down the hillside, Pax following. As Gray passed Bristle and Runt, his very presence seemed to calm them, as if he were an unseen hand stroking their backs. As soon as he passed, Runt danced his ex excitement at seeing Pax, but Bristle curled a lip and hissed. Pax hurried after Gray. When Gray climbed to the ledge beside his mate, Pax dropped to its base and sat respectfully. Gray's mate greeted him with affection. Then she shared news. The wind this morning was from the west. It brought the scent of fire. We must move soon. She looked out at Pax. The outsider smells of humans. Bristle and Runt edged closer, ears cocked toward Gray's response. He is returning to the humans he lived with in the south. I will travel with him to search for a suitable place to move. He and I will rest, then leave tonight. Behind him, Bristle growled again, and Pax felt the urge to run. His boy, he wanted only to find his boy, but instinct told him that he needed rest and food first. He signaled his agreement, and then Gray and his mate glided silently into the green meadow. Runt bounded over and tumbled into Pax. He dropped the toy soldier from his cheek, inviting Pax to play. Bristle jumped between them and swatted the toy away. Humans, remember the... Danger. Runt retrieved the toy and displayed it between his teeth, defiant. Pax sensed that Runt was now in, the, in more trouble than before and that he was the cause. He felt the way often with his boy and the father, and one of his strategies had been to disappear if, they would protect his, if that would protect his boy from the man's anger. He backed away, but Bristle was not satisfied. Stay away from the human stinker, she warned her brother. Remember the danger. Pax took a, closer, took a step closer. My humans are not dangerous. Runt seemed alarmed by this, as if Pax had issued a challenge. He darted uphill toward his den entrance, but his sister was quicker. She blocked him, and when he tried to slink away in another direction, she restrained him with a heavy paw until he stilled in defeat. All oh, humans are dangerous. Pax fur ruffled in a shiver at the scene. Bristle conjured. Then, wind, cold and howling and heavy with the threat of snow, Pax recognized that wind. The story she was about to relate would end with blood on the snow and cold steel jaws. Bristle bared her fangs at Pax and then began.